Hi, my name is Gary Friedman and welcome to the Friedman Archives blog. Today I'm going to talk about three different features that nobody's talking about regarding the Alpha 7R4, the large megapixel shooter, and the best sports camera ever made, the uh, A92. I should have an asterisk there. Best sports camera ever made that doesn't have viewfinder blackout and has a global shutter, so things that move during high speed and silent shooting don't get distorted. Try saying that 10 times fast. No one's talking about these features, but I think they're really important. The first one I want to share with you is one that I alluded to in my recent blog post. Let's say that you're coming back from a shoot and your camera is already in your camera bag. It's in the back of the Jeep. You're wandering around and you still want to be able to download a couple pictures and share them on Facebook because, well, you just love the dopamine fix. So your camera is off and, and, and put away. You can then grab your iPad or Android phone or whatever you have and go to the Imaging Edge mobile app, which looks like this. And over here, there's a feature called Camera Remote Power On Off. Now, believe it or not, even though the camera's off, the computer can communicate with it. The camera doesn't actually turn on. If you look very carefully, you can see the red light LED light that indicates read and write for the uh, card. But what it's doing is it's setting up a Wi-Fi network right now between the iPad and the camera, and it's allowing you to download all the thumbnails. Click on the date here, and then you can choose which ones you wanted to download to your, to your iPad. Uh, I'm gonna choose this one. Oops. I, I, I can choose that one, and that, not that one. Uh, that one's nice. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Nice one of a peacock. So you choose the ones you want and then you click on the icon at the bottom here, which means send it to the iPad and then sure enough, it will do that for you. And then you can upload those to Facebook as you see fit. Then when you're finished, click on the power button in the lower right hand corner and then click on the green power icon there, turn the camera off again. And then it does so. Also useful when you're cameras in the overhead compartment and you still want to be able to do stuff on the airplane while you're still waiting for it to take off. The second feature applies to photojournalists who are out in the field shooting something newsworthy and they want to be able to upload it to their FTP server owned by the company or if you're an independent contractor you can upload it to Alamy. They have a, a separate news feed for, for things that are newsworthy. There's two ways to do it. One is shooting it directly the minute, you start FT the minute you start taking the picture, the FTP will start. The second one is to upload it to your iPad first and then caption and keyword it before you actually go and upload it. So let's do the easy one first. On the camera, there's the FTP transfer function, which is currently on for me. And here you can choose from one of nine pre-configured servers. For this demonstration, I'm gonna select server number one, which is pre-configured for my FTP server over in Hawaii, the same hosting company that handles my uh, freemanarchives.com website. So I'll go there, hit okay. And now from now on, every time I take a picture, it will automatically FTP the information to that server using either a Wi-Fi access point, or if I'm in the middle of nowhere, I can go through my iPad. As long as there's a cell phone signal, you'll be able to get it out there. Now, so we know it's working, let me uh, move over to this app over here, which uh, shows me the contents of my FTP server. Right now it's empty, so I'm gonna have my camera on and I'm gonna take a couple pictures. Now with the camera still on, of course the iPad's still on, if you're using that to upload it uh, to the internet, you can see the FTP icon in the display with the up arrow, that means it's transferring right now. Now for the purposes of this demonstration, just to make sure it goes quickly, I'm shooting JPEG only and the smallest JPEG size this camera can generate. Uh, if you're shooting RAW plus JPEG, it'll take about two to three minutes per image, depending on all sorts of variables. Uh, but that's what you can expect. Sometimes it might be faster to actually upload them to your iPad first, select the ones you want and then do it. In the next step, we're gonna talk about that. But in the meantime, I should be able to hit refresh right here. And there we go. I just took three pictures and there they are. In order to get it to work here, you have to make a couple of changes. The first change is you head over to your camera for FTP transfer function. 
you need to choose a different server. The one I have here is set up for the iPad. Select that, then hit OK. So once you change it, wait a second and look at the bottom of the screen. It'll say connecting. First, it'll find the router that I'm using. Yeah, great, now it's connected. Now, every time I take a new picture, it will automatically go to this app. Thusly, I'm just going to take a couple random pictures here. Nothing art worthy. And if you wait long enough, you can see the green square flashing in the upper right hand corner. It's indicating that the FTP is connecting to the camera and it's uploading an image. And the images should start showing up on the screen on the left here. Excellent. Now we can actually go and edit these a little bit. We can crop and we can change some of the captions and keywords and then we can up upload it to our favorite FTP server. So let me do that. Now the first thing you should know about captioning and keywording is you can save an awful lot of time by preloading the event and the date and the copyrights and all that to the camera ahead of time. So that way every picture you take has this stuff embedded. And you can do that in this menu over here in the setup menu. Uh, it's called the IPTC information. Here's how it works. On your PC, you can download an app. And again, I give you the link in the book. Fill out all your information, save it to an SD card, put the SD card into the camera, and then you use this feature here, register IPTC info. It pulls the information in, and then every image that you generate will have this information embedded in it. So here it is on the iPad. And as you can see, the last time I used this, I was in Memphis, and uh, we're talking about a climate rally, so it's leftover information, but you get the idea. If I want to edit some of this, on the lower left-hand corner, I say IPTC metadata, and I can go and change some of this information if I want to. Uh, for example, it's no longer a climate information in Tennessee, so I can just X out of that. And rather than typing furiously, what I can do is actually, whoops, I can hit the microphone button on the bottom, Gary Studio, somewhere in California. And then it'll do text-to-speech, and there it is. And then I can go to the next image over here and do the same thing. 200 donut holes. So this is a great tool if you want to be able to go through all your images, pick the best ones, caption and keyword them, and then, and then, when you're done, Click the ones you want, check, check, and hit FTP at the very bottom of the screen. There it is, and then you hit Upload. Now, previous to all this, my information for Globalhost has been put into the iPad as well. So once I caption keywords like my favorites, I can then upload this automatically. And it can do it while I'm driving home. I don't have to wait and import everything into Lightroom, which takes a year, and then caption keyword everything, and it's forward. And this is so much faster. And you can go home and have a beer and relax. Enjoy your day. So that's pretty good. Those are the three basic things. Just being able to wake up the camera while it's asleep, pull the images down, upload them to Facebook. That's one. Two, sending everything to an FTP server every time you take the picture. Three, send everything to here, caption and keyword it, and then send it up to your favorite FTP server. There is a fourth feature only available on the A92. And again, nobody's talking about this, but it takes advantage of the fact that the A92 has an Ethernet connector built right into the side, right over here. And what you can do is you can take five or six A9s or A92s, hook them up to a router, and then have them controlled by one piece of desktop software. So essentially, you're like shooting tethered, but you can control five or six cameras at once instead of only one. That's pretty impressive. Up until now, you only thought an RX0 could do that. So those are the four really promising features that nobody's talking about. Thanks so much for watching, and let me take this opportunity to plug the ebooks that I've written about these two cameras. They're 750 pages long, more detailed than you'll ever find anywhere else, and you can find them all on freedmanarchives.com/ebooks. Bye.